Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Vivid Collectibles. My name is Danny, and tonight I'm really excited to talk to you about and give you my thoughts and review about Sideshow's brand new Ghost Rider premium format figure. Uh, this statue was sculpted by a trio of sculptors, Matt Mullen, Jorge Villar, and Daniel Bell, along with the uh, rest of the Sideshow team. Uh, they made 750 of these, and they're currently wait-listed. So I remember personally when this was first announced, I was a little bit iffy. I wasn't so sure based on the tease and the pictures. I needed to see more. And even after I saw more, I was still on the fence about it. The dimensions didn't seem like it would be that big or big enough. Uh, the half the bike thing threw me initially. And then the more and more that I saw this statue, the more and more that I liked it. And then they, I think they had it at Sideshow Con where they even turned the lights on. And even then I was still on the fence about it because I just wasn't really, really sure about it. But I'm really glad that I went ahead and purchased this statue. Uh, and you're going to find out why during the review. This statue turned out really, really great. Uh, however, there's a lot of people thinking that it's a one-trick pony that when the lights are off on the statue, that it's not the same statue. And granted, that's probably true, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad statue. That just means that the lighter feature is so great, it just elevates it to another level. On its own, the paint applications are actually really good, and there's a lot of different tones, a lot of different types of paints going on here that really make this piece stand out. The pose is great. The sculpt is really good. Uh, the biggest problem for me was assembling this thing. It's an assembly nightmare because when you talk about a statue that basically fully lights up, everything not only gets plugged in, uh, it doesn't just key in, it gets plugged in. So it's got to be very precise the way that you key this thing in. And it's got a lot of moving parts, a lot of fragile parts, including that long whip, chain whip, the portraits. Uh, fragile the statue is fragile so knowing this already when I unboxed it I was very careful because I was expecting this to be a challenge and it was but in the end it's uh, completely worth it in my opinion uh, I'm gonna give you my thoughts about it what I like what I don't like and then uh, of course people are gonna debate which Ghost Rider statue is best and that's always going to be subjective as collectors, we're very passionate about what we collect. I happen to have this because I wasn't into collecting when the XM1 came out. And if I owned the XM1, uh, maybe I would not have been tempted to buy this. Uh, but I don't own that. I've never actually seen it in person. I have seen reviews and I know people love it. And there's some customs out there that are really good as well. But this statue is very, very well done. And you'll be the judge as to where it ranks. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead now, give you my thoughts, what I like, what I don't like, and then you make up your mind from there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with this base and what a base it is. Okay, you have his uh, motorcycle basically busting through the black top. It's on fire. And if, if you see, right, you have the sub base, which is just the, um, the black top, right? And that looks, you know, like most black top. What I like about Sideshow lately, and it doesn't work for every piece, but I like how they're painting the statue so that it looks like the light's reflecting off of it. And in this statue, more than any, it really, really works. So you see what looks like orange overspray. It's not overspray. This is intentional to add that, that uh, fire effect. As you see what I'm showing you here, it has like a pearlescent color on top of the, the oranges. And that's basically that oil slick burn, right? So when the oil burns, you can see all the different hues and all the different shines that it has. And that pearlescent really captures that. It's almost like a hint of like purple on this piece. You see it throughout the statue, right? Not on the rock so much, but where the fire is burning on the bike engine. Look at all that great detail 
on the bike. You see the steel is melting. A lot of great details on this thing. And that burning effect looks great. The weathering on the bike is really good. Again, I'm going to show you a little bit more of that pearlescent color that I'm talking about. See it there towards the bottom. Again, it almost looks like red, reds and purples. All these different hues. You see the debris right behind you. And again, more of that great fire effect and that pearlescent color that I was mentioning before. It's got a lot of debris, a lot of black top all over the place. This thing's in motion and it does a good job of capturing that. A lot of these little extra parts that key in, don't key in all that great. They're kind of loose. Like I said, assembling this thing was really a pain, especially putting in the handlebars. But more on this base, again, you see all the dirt debris, all the weathering, the melting steel, the burning steel. It really does this, this statue justice. Paint's great, sculpt's great. And again, a lot of detail went into this bike. It's not a clean bike, it's burning. And then we have the front wheel, which is basically surrounded by fire. It's destroyed the black top, so it's caught up into the fire. And I love the flame effects. They look really good. They're not dull by any means. But understand that they have to be translucent enough for the lighter feature to really, really do its job. So they weren't going to paint this a solid orange. They're giving you a lot of different tone variations and creating the fire effect uh, in a subtle way, but it looks really, really, really good. It looks amazing in person, actually. And then you have that light orange right there in the middle of the wheel. Again, more of that great detail, great textures, fire textures, the black top surrounding this, swirling through that uh, fire wheel. And again, look at the fireball in the middle. Look at the melted steel right there. Good textures, really good paint to, to show you that. And this is where it keys in to the bike, and that was a chore to put together. Look at the light right there, it's cracked. Again, nice weathering effects all throughout this bike. And then by the gas uh, tank over here, some of that purple hue right there, and more of that great weathering on that bike itself. The details are there, and they're really good, and the paintwork is outstanding. Again. I can't say it enough how that pearlescent, almost purple, really sticks out and really adds to this statue and just brings it to life. Again, the bike isn't uh, as big as some people would like, and I could understand that being a nitpick, but personally, I'm out of space, so I, I like this. This does not bother me at all. Again... More views of the statue. I don't want to get this cord wrapped up and knock it over. So let me stop spinning this thing around as much. All right, back to this. Now we're going to go talk a little bit about him and uh, his outfit, right? You have this leather outfit that he wears. And you can see all of that leather effect. And it's tattered. It's burning. You see all the, pur the purple, and purple, excuse me, the orange hues that are there as the light reflects off of it. That's done intentional for effect. Lots of spikes. They're really, really sharp and nicely done. It is a very fragile piece because there are a lot of moving parts to it. You see where the fabric is stretching. Again, Sideshow does a great job of this. Let's do most of these companies today. Look at the torn rip leather right there. All the stitching on the sides of the pants. The leather, it looks really, really good. The boots, you know, again, great detail on that cowboy boot right there. The, the little buckles, again, some of that orange highlight right there. Great leather work, great wrinkles in all the folds. More of those little spikes throughout. That's uh, part of his theme and his outfit. I can't tell you how good this looks in person. It's really, really, really good. Hopefully it's capturing that on camera. Now we move up. Again, that, that waist right there, surrounded by the spikes. And then really where this really shines is the blistering leather right there. Look at all that. That's great. It's got that wet effect. 
looks phenomenal. And then some of those orange hues that go along with the orange hues in the bottom of his portrait right there. Blistering leather. It's on fire. It's absolutely outstanding. Again, really nice folds. Great sculpt on this. And look at the back. Some of that uh, orange right there to really accentuate that burning effect. It's really, really done well. All right, this chain whip was a pain to key in. It keys in first back here, right there. And there is a bit of a seam, but you'll never notice it when looking at the statue. And then you can connect it to the left arm, which connects in two parts. So this part first, very fragile, lots of spikes on this. But again, great detail. Look at the cracks on it. Everything done really well, a lot of attention to detail. And then the hand is attached to the whip already. And then you just attach that. There is some wiggle room so that it doesn't break, but it, it's not loose enough where it's a problem. It looks really good. As far as that chain whip, again, it's covered in fire and some of that debris. So you can see the chain coming through, right? The fire. And it's uh, pretty long, but it doesn't stick out. And there's the back of the whip, or the handle, I guess, if you, if you had a handle. And then the portraits. Uh, this comes with two portraits, one where he's mid-transformation, and one where he's, as you know, him, ghost, uh, ghost Rider, fully transformed. The burning hair looks really good, off or on, uh, but you got to be careful when removing this because it's basically touching the left arm and these are again fragile uh, some people don't like that the skull isn't lighter I think it looks great it's burning so I wouldn't expect it to be uh, white it's got some of that you know singed burning skull look you know portraits got that orange swirl swirling fire there that looks really good when it lights up and then the eyes are they're just okay they're not Perfect, they're not great, but they're not bad by any means. And again, it's more of that great detail on that portrait. So overall, I think the paint and sculpt are really, really well done. And the statue stands tall without the light of feature because of the way it's painted. Now, it's going to be dull in comparison to one that would not have a light of feature because they're not focused on that. They're going to create the fire by the paint. And again, some people prefer that, but I think Sideshow wanted to do something different and give you that light up feature that basically differentiates it from all of the uh, any licensed piece that's out there right now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, dim the lights and show you what it looks like lit up. Okay, so there you have it. The light up feature on the Ghost Rider and this really really takes the statue to a different level again it doesn't mean that the statue isn't good without it i just went over that and why i think it's amazing still but now look at the light up feature how it really comes to life and creates that burning fire that no other statue has been able to do as well uh, except for maybe that uh, that custom that i have never seen in person but look at how it comes to life now that it's fully lit up that chain whip, look at how good that looks. That's a different, like, yellowish uh, orange more than anything else. You know, the light on the bike and the, the busted headlight, that looks great. That uh, hell wheel in the front looks amazing. Really, absolutely takes it to another level. And then behind Ghost Rider, again, that chain wrapping around it. More of that effect. And look at the portrait. Look at the hair on fire. The eyes lit up. It really, really, really makes the statue pop. It looks really good. It does take it to a whole other level. So for that reason, and everything else I mentioned, I'm so happy that I was able to get this before I went waitlisted, here's a full shot. All right, it looks really amazing. 
What I'm gonna do now is gonna I'm gonna swap out the portrait, which you gotta be very careful, and show you the mid transformation portrait. Okay, so here you have the mid transformation portrait. This half has some skin still left on it, and some of his uh, hair. So you can see the hair strands right there as it's starting to transform into just the skull. And then here, the skin is already searing. You can see it wrapped around the rest of the face and then more of that same burning hair. This portrait really adds, I wasn't sure that I was gonna like it that much, this portrait, but it's a tough choice. This is really good. And you get like the best of both worlds and it looks like a different piece. So I think this portrait is probably better than the regular, or oh, there is no regular, than the one that's uh, the standard, but it looks amazing. Again, I'm very happy with the way this statue looks. Again, this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but as for me, I'm very happy to have this statue in my collection. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, you know, are you gonna get it? Do you like it? What do you prefer? Once again, my name is Danny. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much.